conversation is going round. People talking about the colors come to town. Fresh out of the summer breeze, should take you by surprise. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Fresh Waves here at Whistle FM. I'm your host, Brenda Masson. We'll have a couple of hours of fabulously informative and enticing conversation with our guest this morning, who is Laurie Mountford of Com- Country Home Care Services here in Stouffville. And before we start... Big shout out going out to Reeser's Market and Bakery for the muffins that they provide the station there at 5758 Main Street. Jay is our technical producer, Mr. Rumball himself, DJ Lil J Rumball, <laughs> coming to you live from the studios of downtown Whistle FM. How are you doing this morning, Jay? I'm doing very good, Brent. How are you? Great. Great, great, great. And if uh, if any of our listeners have questions, how can they get a hold of us this morning? On Facebook, we, you can go to uh, Fresh Waves on Whistle FM on Facebook. We're also on Twitter, uh, Fresh Waves Radio, or you can give us a call here at the station if you like, 905-640-1027. There you go. Those are all the ways that you can get a hold of us this morning. And if you do have questions, know that we'll try and answer them on the air. If we don't get to them on air, you can still... Send us your questions, and we'll have Lori get back to you as soon as she can. And, you know, also share a story or two with us. We love to hear your stories. This is Fresh Waves, where we can tell all of your stories if we want. And we'll even change your name to protect the innocent. (laughs) Yeah, we could do that, too. (laughs) We can. I think that was the old dragnet line, wasn't it? Was oh, it? I think I'm dating myself. Yeah. Even you aren't old enough to know that I show, right, I have no right, idea Jay? what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> I've been here since dinosaurs freely roamed the earth, and I'm proud of it. Well, joining us in the studio this morning, we have Lori Mountford of Country Home Care Services. Now, when I say that name, the first thing that comes to mind is sort of a cleaning service. <laughs> But that's not what you are at all. No, not at all. Not at all. No. Okay, tell us a little bit about Country Home Care Services. Okay, well, we are a bit of a unique retirement home in uh, Stouffville. And uh, the reason why we're unique is because we are a home environment. So it was originally a family home. So it was a, it's actually physically a house. Yes, it is. It's okay. physically a house. Um, <laughs> and with a few renovations, and we now have nine private rooms. And um, we have uh, wonderful PSW staff that assist people with all the uh, daily activities of living. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So when people hear the word home or seniors home, they think of a large institution with many rooms, uh, nursing stations, meals Mm -hmm. that are, for the most part, I don't know, meant for masses of people as opposed to Mm -hmm. a few people. So that's why I asked you if you were, in fact, a house, because you are in a house. We are, yes. And really, it is um, a home with all the um, amenities of a home, but with all the safety features um, that would be required to assist people, like ceiling lifts, um, grab bars, you know, anything that we need to, you know, make, it's safe for people, but still with the homey feeling and homemade meals um, that uh, we shop where everybody else shops in Stouffville. And, uh, and yeah, just make sure that the meals are fantastic and, yeah, people are comfortable and at home. So a senior can be a resident at your home, which is a house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the way that they would at, say, Parkview or one of the other facilities that are that are in Stouffville. So it's just a different option exactly. for seniors living. Yes. Now, are your residents able-bodied? Um, no, we're, I hate to say it, but we're sort of a gray area. And really not play on words there. <laughs> Their hair color. Um, but um, a lot of retirement homes, um, and because of you know people living in their own suites and that type of thing, um, they have to live fairly independently, be able to get themselves down to the dining room, out for activities, that kind of thing. When you're in a home environment, which is much smaller, we know where everyone is and if they've come down for lunch or dinner and that kind of thing. So, you know, if somebody, um, you know, 
really isn't well for the day or something like that, we know why they're not coming down. So, you know, really people can live uh, with more advanced health concerns. And so we do take people with, you know, mobility issues, um, people who, you know, again, when I say memory issues, memory issues, but no behavioral issues. Right. Um, and uh, really, we've had people with feeding tubes. We've had people with, you know, uh, oxygen. I mean, really quite an extensive list. Not to say that we've seen it all, but we've seen quite a bit. Because right. we've been around since 2005 doing this, so it's uh, we have seen quite a bit. Really? Since 2005? Yeah. Well, when Jay started to work, because Jay does work with seniors, and mm-hmm. um, he has actually a degree in that from, or a certificate in that from Seneca College, right? That's right, social service worker gerontology diploma. So yeah, yeah. isn't that interesting? Right. Mm-hmm. And good for you, Jay. Oh, thank you. You're you're a man of many talents there, sitting behind the microphone, yeah, helping sure out on Whistle <laughs> FM, having your own show, and working with seniors. Yeah, doing two things that I love: radio and seniors. So yeah, mm-hmm. and you are on the accessibility committee committee for the town of Witcher Stovall, which That's is right. also very commendable. Oh, definitely. Congratulations oh, sure. on all the work you do there, because oh, that really you. is a thank necessity you. for the community. Mm-hmm. So in your facility, Lori, you you actually have, what am I going to say? It's, it's like you've created a family. It really feels like it in a lot of respects, because the staff I've got, I mean, I can't say enough about the staff. Um Quite a few of them had been there either since 2005 or not too many years after that. So they've been around for a long time. As a matter of fact, this morning I was thinking, who was the last person we hired and how long ago was it? And I think we've hired one person, one new person in the last, I think, been three, four years. Right. Yeah. So, and I didn't even know you existed until Jay said that that's where he was going to work. And I said, Jay, there is no seniors home. <laughs> and he said, Bren, that's where I'm, I've got my new job. And I said, Jay, there is no seniors home there. Believe me, I went to every single one of them with my mother looking for a place when she was going to move. I know where they all are. There's none on 10th line, I guess it is. Yeah, York, right? York Germ line. Yeah. 10th line, yeah. Yeah, we're York Germ. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, well, I'm working there, so there is one there. <laughs> anyway, we had this really funny conversation, and then he said, you have to come and see it. And I did, and I was absolutely blown away. Oh. Thank you. I didn't know it existed. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it's really fantastic. So to know that you've been there for that long, that's mm-hmm. that's incredible. Yeah. What a good kept secret. Well, thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're not trying to keep it a secret, but uh, we are fortunate that um usually we are full. Um but uh you know, if there's a waiting list, but because when you only have 9 residents, the turnover is really, you know, doesn't happen very often, which is a good thing. Right. Um, so when a room comes available, we go back to people who have inquired and on the waiting list, and inevitably, you know, people usually want something fairly quickly when they're looking. Right. They've all found something else. So it seems to be either the uh, family that's looking the most recent, or we go to the hospitals, which we have an excellent rapport with the hospitals, and usually we get uh, uh, filled up again quite quickly. Isn't that interesting? Well, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we will be talking more with Laurie Mountford about this concept of a home. But it has a bit of a different connotation because it's a house turned into a home. (laughs) It's fantastic. You're listening to Fresh Waves. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Lil J. Join me every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern for The Block Party. A two-hour journey of the best in the Canadian underground dance music scene. Featuring tracks and DJ mixes from Canada's emerging artists. From the disco hits of the 70s to the latest dance floor fillers. No lineups or cover charges. It's your weekly free access to the beats that are packing dance floors in Canada and around the world. The Block Party, Saturday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on 102.9 Whistle FM and online at whistleradio.ca. Hi, this is Amy Grant. Sight-impaired children have a special place in my heart. I almost lost my eyesight in an accident several years ago, so I know firsthand what a precious, God-given gift our sight really is. That's why I'm happy to lend my voice in support of Christian Blind Mission International a ministry that helps save the eyesight of over a million children each year. But CBMI needs your help to do even more, so please open your heart today. Please call us at 1-888-856-CBMI.
We are back on Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Brenda Masson, and today we're talking with Laurie Mountford from Country Home Care Services, and we're talking about that beautiful facility that's located on Durham... York Durham Line. York Durham Line, <laughs> and uh, wow, it is stunningly beautiful, and we're very happy to have you in the studio today. Thank so you. tell us a little bit about how you came to be in this industry and how you came to have that house, which okay. is now a home. Sure. <laughs> um, well, I'd like to say I planned it, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> so in 2001, um gentleman I was dating at the time and I, uh, we decided to move to Stouffville. Anyway, we bought the home, um, which is now country the house. home care. The <laughs> house, yes. And um, when I w- moved up there, I was actually working in Toronto and I thought, no, I need to take a break and figure out what I really want to do you know, next. So when I was taking a break, um, I started volunteering with seniors and going into just, uh, you know, some companionship, that kind of thing. And um, when I was visiting with seniors, I really noticed, you know, there was a huge need for people, uh, PSWs or personal support workers to come in or even caregivers just to come in for, you know, you know, various different things, but um, that the ones that were going in were really not, the people who didn't seem as happy with people were on their phones or they were, you know, not maybe making meals to their liking, all those kinds of things. So Mm -hmm. I thought, there's a need here that could be filled. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. So I started Caregiver Services, and I thought it would be a small little company that uh, I would have a few PSWs and caregivers, and that would be great. Well, little did I know, the need was much huger than I ever could imagine, and within eight months, uh, we had 30 employees. Wow. So, yeah, <laughs> things took off rather quickly. So anyway, um, I was running that out of country home care, which was still just the family home. My daughter and boyfriend and I were living there. And then, um, I guess, oh, good grief, we were there for about two years and I was running caregiver services and it was going like gangbusters. And the boyfriend decided that it was um, too much work, that house, because it is a, a large home and a large piece of property. Mm-hmm. So I sort of thought, reluctantly, I started looking with him and we looked around Stouffville to see what else we could find that would be a little less work. And in doing so, I kind of decided I liked the house better than him. <laughs> <laughs> How honest so, of you to say. <laughs> well, it, that's the fact. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, <laughs> um, I bought him out of the home. and um, So he moved and you, he you moved, stayed. And I stayed and I thought, gee, we've, we've still got a lot of room in this house. And if I do renovate a small portion of it, we could, you know, accommodate some seniors living there as well as having, you know, a PSW coming in to assist there. So that's how it sort of started initially with three rooms, uh, four residents, and one PSW. And as things expanded, caregiver services ended up with 120 employees. And I know it went gangbusters. And um, country home care kept expanding as well. And then, heaven forbid, my daughter went off to university, and so rented out her room. So, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. but anyway, I did sell caregiver services in 2014, and country home care developed into a nine-bedroom home. Wow. Yeah. So a nine-bedroom home. So I'm loving doing just the one business now, because I can really focus and have a great time with the residents and the staff, and yeah, it's much more relaxing and enjoyable at this point. So when you speak about staff, yes, how many staff do you have, and what do they do? We have 13 staff, and uh, most are PSWs that assist with everything from bathing, toileting, grooming, you know, but they also wear a couple of hats there because it is a home environment. Um, they are responsible for assisting with some of the cleaning and making the beds and that kind of thing, and um, also the meal preparation, which uh, really there's three people, the, the key people that do the cooking and that kind of right. thing. So, yeah, but they, uh, they are fantastic. And you have one that's just a cook? We do have one lady that is just to cook for dinner in the evenings. Yeah. And then we do have people who do activities, which is Jason is one person who does activities as well as uh, Julie. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So tell me a little bit. Explain to us how a normal day, if there is ever (laughs) such a thing. Okay. I'm, I'm stretching it here. How a day looks 
at your facility. Okay, it's funny you say normal. We have a sign, just a, a little joke one that says, um, normal around here is just a setting on the dryer. Because <laughs> really there is no such thing as normal. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, a normal day. Well, the best way to explain it is we want people to be as independent as they can be, but also have choices. Um, so, for instance, in the morning, uh, we don't say that, you know, you have to get up uh, Mrs. So-and-so and Mr. So-and-so at such and such a time. We find out when people are being assessed and they're moving into the home, what time of day do you normally like to get up? Um, what time do you like to have breakfast? What do you like to have for breakfast? So they have a choice of hot breakfast, cold breakfast, or a combination of the two. So it really, we like to give choices. So that's pretty much how the day starts. We also get... The is there a specific time? Like breakfast is only from 7 till 10. If you miss it, you miss it? N- no. Too bad, so sad? <laughs> <laughs> you know yes. what? When you I go starve. on vacation <laughs> to an all-inclusive or someplace like that or these, these different resorts, yes. and you're on vacation... <laughs> to me, vacation means absolutely zero schedule, no timetable. Do what you want, when you want. And then you look and you see breakfast from 7 till 9.30. And you arrive at 9.31 and there's no breakfast left. <laughs> Lunch from noon until 1.31. Okay, I'm arriving at 1.32. I'm, two meals I've missed so far. <laughs> Can I have a snack? <laughs> you know, oh, okay. We do tend to structure ourselves no matter if we're exactly. on vacation or not. So yes. in your place, you, you could Would wake we- up at 11.30 and that's just fine? Well, <laughs> not really. Um, yeah. You know, what we try to do is when people normally have told us they like to get up. So if somebody is sleeping in and we find out, you know, from the person who worked the overnight, because we do have overnight staff as well mm-hmm. that are awake. And so they they realize if somebody's had a bad night the night before. So if somebody's had a bit of a sleepless night the night before, and usually they like to get up at, say, 8, 830, and they're sleeping in, you know, obviously we're going to yeah, yeah, give them a little slack. Yeah. Or we may wake them up at, say, at 9 o'clock and nudge them and say, did you want to get up now or do you want a little longer and that kind of thing. So, you know, again, it's more of a, you know, option for them at that point. And, you know, if that's the exception, sure, if they want to get up and if they want to have their breakfast at 1030, you know, that's fine. And, you know, they might want a later breakfast knowing lunch isn't that far, far along. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we have the newspaper in the morning and, you know, quite often a lot of people like to watch the game shows in the morning on TV. But, uh, you know, really there's different places for people to sit too. So, you know, some people, you know, they like to, you know, maybe even just sit in the dining room because it's nice and bright with windows all around and they may want to just sit and read the newspaper. Some people, you know, they might want to go out and we have a sunroom, which is like an enclosed uh, porch, which is windows all the way around. So, you know, we have birds and squirrels and, you know, trees and green. <laughs> trees it's and very green. Pretty. <laughs> yeah. Hard to describe on the radio, but it's like being in a garden. It's absolutely beautiful out there. Yes, it is. And we do have an, uh, a fireplace in that room that uh, is nice and cozy as well. So people like to sit out there and maybe even do a crossword or something. So, um, again, it's it's more what people would do in their own home. Um, you know, certainly, and I'm, this is not a criticism on retirement homes, because some of them, I mean, I sit there and go, good grief, I could fill my day with a social schedule that, you know, there's so much yeah. activities and so much going on yeah. and that kind of thing, um, which is fabulous for some people, but other people, that's maybe not, you know, their lifestyle hasn't been that way and they really would like to have a little bit quieter environment. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So with nine people, you're not going to get the 32 people showing up for arts and crafts this afternoon. That's kind right. Of thing, which, exactly. like you said, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's an option for them that, you know, again, you know, I like to think that we're another option other than, you know, um, some retirement homes, which offer different, different things. And things. Yes. But yours is more like a house full of like-minded people all living together and kind of existing in what would, uh, I don't want to say the word normal again, but would normally yeah. be considered a, a home slash family environment. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We are like a large family environment. So do you have a living room and a family room, that kind of thing? Yeah, we have um, a living room that has, again, another uh, stone fireplace in it and a large screen TV. And um, then we've got, yeah, the porch room and then the dining room. And then um, each person does have their own bedroom. So again, if they're having a day that they like a little quieter environment and, you know, they wanted to stay in their rooms, they have their own telephone and TV in their rooms as well. And all the beds are adjustable as well, too. So, you know, they can make themselves nice and comfy in bed to, to watch TV as well. Isn't that neat? Yeah. 
So, I, I'm I'm blown away by the whole concept of it. I think it's absolutely fantastic because a lot of people miss that mm-hmm. when they're institutionalized. And there's I'm not saying that institutions are bad. I'm not going to. No, no. We're not comparing one to the other. We're just saying that this is a different option. Exactly. Exactly. We're going to take a little break and get the weather and all that kind of stuff, right, Jay? Yep. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk about the old ways, which you are now making a modern way. But the old ways, when the grandparents actually moved in with you and lived as a family. Interesting. We'll be right back. You're listening to Fresh Waves on Whistle FM.